Yeah, Cameron came into the rec recruiting scene somewhere between his uh, junior and senior year in, in, in high school. We knew some of his coaches back in New Zealand. We tried to get him. We didn't get him. University of Michigan got him. And then there was a coaching change there in Michigan, likely to us. And therefore, the summer of 2014, right before he was supposed to go to college, he came available again. So we got him the second time, worked really hard, lots of conversations with Cameron, with his parents. Uh, Devin was joining in at that time, Devin Bowen, our other coach. So he picked TCU. Luckily, luckily for us, he picked TCU. And um, here we are eight years later. It's a huge confidence boost for him. Uh, great experience being able to get there and, and, and a chance to win it all and you know, a, a chance to be Wimbledon champion. Uh, so I think that's, that's, that's big. And for him to be able to do it right there in, 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 in London, in front of his fans, uh, all his coaches, all the federations that are watching him, be able to handle all that spotlight. Great, great for him, you know, builds him as a, as a, as a, as, as an athlete. And for us, we just get to enjoy the, the watching them uh, grow, and it's there's so much pride and so much uh, excitement for not just for for us as coaches, Devin and I, but also for his teammates, tennis program, athletic program, and then TCU and Fort Worth as a community, where everybody is uh, embracing them. And uh, Facundo Lugones, who also played for TCU, who's coaching them, does an amazing job of always wearing and representing TCU and that's uh uh we love it and TCU we you know everybody loves it it, it definitely does not go unnoticed and there's there's no doubt he was head and shoulders above your typical 18 year old coming in extremely competitive always willing to do the extra work uh physically we would do fitness and everything he would go and do his own he would go for these long runs all on his own so his endurance level is Tremendous, it's great for him in this five set matches. It showed in the quarterfinals and in the third round there, in the fourth round, be able to go the distance. Um, you know, to, to semifinals of Wimbledon, that's, it's hard to say. What I will say is that, is that there's nothing he could accomplish that we would ever be shocked or surprised. He's always been able to defeat the odds and, 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 and do do more than anybody would expect of him and what yeah, i mean that's a huge stage huge stage there's going to be a lot of emotions i think the fact that he played federer last year in the third round on center court is going to help him play nadal on center court uh french uh, french open and, and australian open third rounds uh of the grand slams that's going to help him in this experience um yeah it's uh it puts him a, a, at a different level he's only the third brit um fourth brit in the open era to ever get to the semifinals of wimbledon so uh it's scary to think about what would happen if he wins this match i think it'd be incredible and and i think at this point anything is possible like i say you we wouldn't put anything past uh, cameron and yeah you know it, it sounds sounds stupid but uh in, in his last year of college he was by far the number one player in the country. And every time, every time he stepped on the court, he had absolutely zero to win. He was already 220 ATP. Probably the next college player was ranked 550 ATP. So that that being able to, you know, have that pressure on him, I, I do I like to believe that it helped him be ready for this. This is a, obviously massive scale and and way, way bigger. But I, I believe the emotions and, and, and being in that spot is the same. Uh, being so they got nothing to lose. So I think he's embracing it. I think he he knows that he's got a formula that he relies on, which is hard work, top fitness, and, and a lot of discipline. He and, and compete like like there is no tomorrow. And and not, none of that changes with his ranking, none of that changes with anything. So he's he's earned every bit of everything he's ever gotten just by by, by the way he works mm -hmm. at it. And he's obviously not easy, not easy to make Djokovic uncomfortable, not easy to to beat him on grass. It's one of being 
numbers wise is probably his best his best uh, surface for Djokovic. His record is incredible there. Um, yeah, tough. What what I will say is that this is finally the first time that Cameron gets to play as an underdog in a while. He's been playing as a favorite, ranking wise, seating wise, all the pressure of England. This time he gets to play one of the greatest. So I'm hoping that he's able to loosen up a little bit, uh, be a little bit more aggressive, be able to to go after after him a little bit more than he's he was able to in the quarterfinals. I could feel mm -hmm. he was he was not comfortable during that match against Gofan. He knew it was a great opportunity. So that that underdog mentality is usually worked out well for Cameron. And I'm hoping that that's exactly what happens. And then once you get into the physicality of the game, and I think the longer this match goes, the, the better chances are for, for Cameron. Uh, he's, he's uh, you know, you had, so he comes in when Feather, it's all about Feather and Nadal, and you had Murray in there, but it was Feather and Nadal. Feather, one of the most liked and respected. Nadal, one of the most liked and respected. And I think Djokovic comes in, he tried to be the funny guy and that didn't last very long. So then he kind of took on this, well, I'll be the bad guy. So he's kind of a little bit of the party pooper, the bad guy. Uh, he's not as, he's not as uh, loved and, 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 and uh, admired as, as a human or as an entertainer, like, like a feather and a doll were. So, I think he's always going to have that chip on his shoulder. And I'm sure he knows that for him to be considered the best ever, which he might be, that he is going to have to break all the records and have to earn it that way. And to where there is no point. I'm just hoping that he doesn't add to his record until the U.S. Open and uh, doesn't get to do it here at Wimbledon. I think, I think Nadal will go down as one of the most admired and respected competitors and just fighters uh, whatever you think of that Spanish sort of attitude and toughness, uh, he exemplifies it by he by the way he he overcomes adversity and pain, uh, uncomfortableness like he did today against Fritz. I thought Fritz had it in Nadal. You know, just when you think he's out, just when you think he's not going to be able to play in the semifinals of, against Krigios, you know, he, there he will be. I'm sure. So. His legacy is that of just the, the ultimate competitor, just an unbelievable warrior, very well respected, never any drama, you know, with him. So um, I'm hoping that that uh, for those some of those big tennis fans that want to see a Djokovic Nadal finals, I'm hoping that uh, Nori is sort of the spoil mm -hmm. and uh, and ruins that, and then we get all of Britain cheering for 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 Cameron in the finals. And we are, we are, we're coming towards the end of that era. That's an unbelievable era. I mean, people always talked about the McEnroe Borg era, and then they talked about the Pete Sampras Agassi era, and then nobody ever thought it would be that good. Now you have the Federer, Nadal slash Djokovic Murray era, and it definitely coming towards the end. You see all these younger guys, which is where Cameron comes in. You know, you have the Sverevs and and uh, Medvedevs and um, uh, well Tim who was hurt, uh, Fritz, uh, Cameron. Um, I'm missing one of the one of the biggest. Uh, who who's the other one? Um, uh, Alcaraz. Yeah, and Alcaraz, Alcaraz coming in just so fast. And Krigios, he's still you know Krigios is. Cameron's age, born in 1995, so also only, you know, 27 years old. So they're right at their prime, and they'll be around. So I, Cameron is in that group, uh, and and I believe that Cameron will be around for eight to ten more years. So they're at the top. Yeah. Well, he'll he'll come back and finish his degree at TCU. Uh, he'll probably still ask for a for a scholarship, even though he he'll have uh, you know. 100 million in the bank probably at that time but uh we we did promise it to him so we'll we will honor his scholarship um yeah he'll he'll continue to do this for 8 10 12 whatever years and then he'll come back here he still comes back often he'll be here this is where he's going to train before he goes on his hardcore swing um but uh 
you know, he's got a body, body wise, he, he's had very few injuries. So he's got a, he's shown history shows that he's, he's, his body is good for this and, and he'll have a long, healthy career. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, um, he's not, he, he'll be here. So I'm sure we'll, we'll have a chance to go to dinner and celebrate him. Might do something here at TCU. Uh, it's a good idea. It makes makes my brain think. Your question does. Uh, he's not. That's not his style, though. That's he's very low key. Uh, he stays here with Linda Capel. They have a house at Possum Kingdom. It's a lake. Might go to the lake and celebrate there and just have uh, just a quiet type celebration. It's whatever he wants. But uh, we're just proud of him and, and his coach. His coach also played here at TCU, Facundo Lugones. They were teammates for one year. And Facundo was a scholar athlete of the year here, very well respected and very, very well liked. So we're we're very proud of both of them. Uh, you don't see that very often when someone gets coached from day one from from a young coach, a rookie coach, and they stay together through all this success. Uh, I'm so proud of Cameron for for realizing what a great coach he has next to him, what a great friend he has very uh, trustworthy and, and reliable Facundo. So it, it's so special. You, you don't, you don't ever see it. Usually someone hits it. Well, you know, they do well as a rookie and they get to a certain level, let's say top 50. Then they feel like they have to get a coach who's been there, who's been at the top. And Cameron has kept the same coach than when he was 200 in the world. And uh, that says a lot about Cameron says a lot about Facundo. And, and Philip, I, I wish I, I wish I knew. I love, I love to know that myself. You know, I, I'm sure he'll have a few, a few emotions, a lot of adrenaline, nerves. Uh, I like to see him jumping around a lot in the warm up, make it very active, and kind of get rid of that nervous energy as much as possible. Overhit a little bit in the beginning, uh, then part of you is kind of soaking it in and and enjoying the moment. Uh, but, you know, at this time, he's a professional now. I'm sure he's, he's um, sort of eyes on the target and that's play every point, take care of the next point, take care of this hold, hold, serve, hold, serve, hold, serve, stay with them, stay with them, make them work, make them work. And then see how, see if the, Djokovic gives you an opportunity there where he maybe mentally cracks a little bit and you can get a set or, and then get that lead and then let the crowd help you. And then hopefully the, the physical part, which Cameron is so good at, the longer this match goes, the better his chances are. Mm -hmm. Cameron, it's got to be all Cameron. It's got to be him. So I'm saying Cameron in four sets. Wow. We'll give Djokovic a set and um, we'll let Cameron win in four sets. Cool It'll one. be exciting. And, uh... Him and Krigius are buddies. Him and Krigius are buddies. So that would be... Wow, that would be incredible. But I, I do think watching Nadal today, as much as he's done it a thousand times, I think Krigius wins that match. Mm -hmm. Krigius can get in Nadal's head. There's a little bit of a rivalry there as personal deal. And um, so I'm saying Krigius Nori final. It's going to be awesome. Nice. That's it, yeah, you know, Krigius grew up in Australia. Mm -hmm. Cameron grew up in New Zealand, and they're the same age, 1995 as well. Oh, so, that'd be cool. yeah, I think it's interesting. I do think there is a place for that in tennis. Um, it's very unique about tennis that, that we're the only sport that doesn't. Uh, one of the few, if not only, that you're not allowed to be coached uh, during competitions. But also, I think it's a double-edged sword. I think some coaches are going to learn the hard way that, just because you're right, just because the information you're giving to the player is correct, it only distracts them or gets them out of their focus and it doesn't help. Uh, so there's going to be, it'll be interesting which of these big time coaches. I think you'll see a lot of coaching in the beginning and as time goes by, you'll see less and less coaching mm -hmm. and just picked in, you know, small doses. Yeah. And then last, it's, it's always special, very special, very exciting put it in the category there with the Olympics. I didn't get to play the Olympics. That was my one, my one regret, but uh, it's uh, you get to play as a team, which is you hardly ever get to do that in, in tennis. There's a beauty about college tennis. I think that's helped Cameron. It helped me be able to play for your buddies, for your teammates, for your country. 
Um, not Ev. Cameron had an awesome, awesome win against Roberto Agut in uh, in Spain, down two sets to love, earning his career and a break in Spain on clay and never played on clay. Goes over there. Agut is top 20 in the world. Nor is probably 150 in the world at the time. He's just coming onto the scene and not even not even that high yet. He's just getting started and might have even been 200 in the world and beats him after being down two sets to love. And it's, it was incredible. It's one of the greatest, greatest accomplishments of, of any tennis player, um, I believe. So, and that helped them uh, win the Davis Cup. So that was pretty cool. Awesome.